The Electronic Flight Instrument System, or EFIS, combines the information displayed on all these instruments and tuning panels into two display units. Let's look at how the primary flight display and the navigation display show all this information. Each display combines the indications of several older style instruments into a smaller, easier to view area. Contrasting colors are used to make bugs and other secondary indications easier to find on the black or gray backgrounds. Before we look at the PFD, it is important to remember that this is only an overview of the EFIS. All indications are discussed in detail in later lessons. On older airplanes, you had separate airspeed indicators and attitude indicators. Separate panels and indicator lights showing auto flight status and operating modes are combined into the PFD and shown here. The PFD combines all of this data into one display. Let's look closer at each of these indications. The conventional round dial airspeed indicator has been replaced by a moving tape display. Higher airspeeds are shown at the top of the tape. Current airspeed is shown here. An airspeed trend vector, green, reacts to changes in airspeed. Various speed bugs to indicate takeoff speeds and assist in flap retraction are controlled through the CDUs. They replace the adjustable bugs found on the bezel of most airspeed indicators. The maximum airspeed pointer is replaced by a red and black band. In addition, minimum maneuvering and stick shaker speeds are also displayed. Selected speed indications are controlled through the Mode Control Panel, or MCP. The MCP is located here on the glare shield. These are the airspeed controls. Individual controls on this panel are discussed in other lessons. The attitude indication should look very familiar. The ball type slip skid indicator is now positioned at the top of the PFD below the bank pointer. Radio altitude is shown here instead of on a separate indicator. The rising runway symbol is displayed during ILS approaches. It is discussed in a later lesson. Wind shear, wind shear, wind shear. A pitch limit indicator, or PLI, has been added to aid in stall and wind shear recoveries. Climb, climb, climb. TCAS guidance can also be shown. TCAS is discussed in a separate lesson. The round dial altimeter has also been replaced by a moving tape altitude indication. Larger numbers showing the target altitude are displayed at the top of this tape. A barometric altitude barrow symbol which moves with the tape replaces the movable altitude bugs found on many altimeters. The EFIS control panel is used to set minimums and operate many other PFD and ND features. Current altitude is shown here. Selected altitude indications are also controlled through the MCP. The altitude indication can also display metric values. 
as well as landing altitude from the flight management system. Altitude indications are covered in detail in a later lesson. The round dial vertical speed indicator is simply stretched out vertically on the 747-400. High vertical speeds are shown numerically above or below the scale. Vertical speed controls are discussed in another lesson. The PFD also contains a partial compass card to serve as a secondary reference to the ND. The heading track indication shows current magnetic or true heading. Airplane track is shown by this track line. A manually set heading bug is controlled through the MCP. Heading and track are also discussed in the ND lessons. Separate panels and indicator lights showing auto flight status and operating modes are combined into the PFD and shown here. ILS frequency or identifier, course, and DME normally set with tuning panels and displayed separately are shown here. All navigation radio tuning is done through the CDUs and is explained in later lessons. Since we're discussing navigation, let's take a look at the ND. Conventional navigation instruments usually included a horizontal situation indicator or HSI. A secondary compass card with additional bearing pointers and separate control panels for mode selection and navigation radio tuning. The ND display combines all this information and much more into one area on one compass. The ND mode shown here is called Centered Approach Mode and may look familiar. In this case, ILS approach information is displayed. Selected EFIS mode and radio frequency information are also shown. Both approach and VOR modes have a centered mode, which displays a full compass rose, and an expanded mode with a partial compass rose. The enlarged display is easier to read and allows room to display weather radar returns as well as TCAS information. The EFIS control panel is used to select the desired ND mode, change the displayed range, and to display ADF bearing pointers. A third mode is MAP. This is the recommended mode for flight and the one you'll use the most. It also has expanded and centered modes. MAP displays navigation information from the FMCs. As the airplane moves, so does the MAP. Descent path guidance is also provided in MAP. Weather radar returns and TCAS information can be displayed in both MAP modes. MAP is a track up mode. This is an important difference between ILS and VOR, which are heading up modes. A track up display lets you always see the course you want. 
Take a moment to note the differences in the two displays. Ever wished you had an easier way to see your entire route right in front of you? That is what plan mode is used for. Plan displays static map information. One important difference about plan is that it is always oriented with true north up. The legs page shows the waypoint at the center of the display. By pushing the step line select key, you can move through the route, segment by segment. Push the step key until VAMPS is at the center of the display. Increasing the display range lets you see up to 640 miles of the route at once. Here the range is set for 40 miles. Now set the range for 10 miles. Decreasing the range and moving the display center allows you to look over an approach procedure hours away. Using plan mode during normal route entry is covered in a later FMC lesson. Even though these two displays seem rather crowded and confusing, you'll soon see how informative and easy to use they are. This completes the instruction portion of the Electronic Flight Instruments System Overview.